Um, I want to get off started because I'm fucking hot. I have uh, personally never drank a White Claw. Oh. Um, I have heard uh, for the last two to three years, I mean, 2020 was a fucking bust for everything. Uh, Claw is the law. I really don't know what that means, but uh, I've got a black cherry hard, like a hard cock seltzer here. Uh-huh. Um, tell the audience what you have. Ah, welcome to 2019. I have a <laughs> lime white claw, natural lime, which I'm such a bitch. I can't even open this. It's between this and go. grapefruit for me with the claws. I've had these obviously, but it smells like beer, which is weird. It doesn't smell like beer. It's a seltzer. Mine just smells like lime. I don't know what you're talking about. It smells like you get a little bit of black cherry now, but the initial open is probably carbonation. Yep, it's a white claw. Yeah, that's disgusting. You don't like it? There's no flavor. Uh, try it. Try it again. I guess. No. Like a hint of black cherry. That's wild because I actually, every time I've had black cherry, more it's so much black cherry. I mean, I have no idea how these are. By the way. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, I can't date this thing, but what's a can, dude? This is at least before. Lauren was pregnant. So we're talking what? at least nine months. What are you doing giving me this? Oh, I just saw them in the fridge. What on earth are you doing? One of these left. <laughs> yeah, these are about 10 months. Fuck. 10 months new. Yeah, you're going to be fucked up off of this one. So, um, Jesus. Check it out. So we, uh, we had a fun weekend. At least one of the days. I don't know how the rest of your weekend was. Um, I'm trying to figure. Oh, my weekend was boring as fuck. I want to thank everybody who participated in that which is the reason it was boring as fuck. Anyways, we went golfing on Sunday. So that part was great. Um, I found out that not only am I the best Call of Duty player, but I am one of the best golfers probably in Southern Maryland. Oh, shit. I have the scorecard out in the car, too. I realized I fucked up, but we're going to roll with it, too. Um, What? What happened? Your mic, but it's fine. I'm actually getting what? really into that microphone lately. What's wrong with it? You have the different mic. No, it's fine. Yeah. Sounds good. Dude, I absolutely love that mic. I've been using a lot on stream with the Go XLR. Shout out to, to Sweetwater. Shout out to Sweetwater. Um, it sounds so fucking good. Dude. It's a, it I really like it a lot. But it, that's that's an awesome mic. These things are so fucking big. You know, honestly, if I had, I've been having issues with the stand. Anybody that's paid attention to any fucking episode, it just like droops down like a limp dick. And um, the, this yes. microphone is so fucking heavy. Like, I don't think I would have as many problems. And I use that for streaming because then I got this big ass thing, like a big dildo in my face. And I want something that, you know, uh, I want the audience to see my shitty face. Right? Yes. Anyways, I've been wearing hats lately because I'm, 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 in, we, we did a podcast last week and I turned my head to look at the monitor, right? I'm going off in so many directions. Yeah, it's so much fun. I'm we'll just, get back to the golf in a second. It'll it'll chill um, out. In a I second, turned my I head to look like this. If you guys can see the screen, my head's to it, and all I could see was giant fucking skin. And I'm like, nope, that's it. I'm wearing fucking hats. I'm a hat man now. What's wrong? I'm a hat man. Just keep it, man. I was listening. I was. I'm thinking about doing a drum cover of that song. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. I don't even know. If I know. I've had to have heard the full song before. It's it's weird. He's rapping, but he's a scat man. Let me just tell you that today I'm a scat man. Blah, 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 right. blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we went golfing. I- I'm sore as fuck, dude. I'm a little sore, yeah, surprisingly. My right shoulder, my back, my hips, and my legs done. My pussy and I'm my having crack. trouble sleeping. I'm not, because once I fall asleep, I finally, I've never been able to sleep. But, like, I'm fucking sore. Like, golf... It's supposed to be like this old man, fat man, not so athletic, I think, sorry, Pat, sport. You can just get out there and do it, right? And you just use muscles that you never fucking use in your life. And I have no technique whatsoever. I can't swing for shit. I literally got home, and I think yesterday I was about to put my clubs away. And I'm, like, practicing in the living room, trying not to completely destroy my floor. And I'm just like, how do I do it? I I I feel it's just, it's so awkward. I can't figure it out. I don't know what it is with the golfing, but, um, so yeah, we're going to try to hit some driving ranges and get better at it. It's like the oldest sport 
of all time and it's like we're n- known for being extremely difficult you don't know what's what's up with golf yeah what's up with golf guys uh, i think one of the issues is when i when i'm swinging that fucking club i think i'm out there about to hit a fucking home run you know like i think i'm about to fucking swing and that ball is sailing across and then i completely miss it put every bit of power that i had that was unnecessary to begin with and uh, I completely miss, and then I'm tired. I can't even hit the fucking ball right. And then when I do hit it, it's a skippity hoppity bounce on the ground, hoping it goes 100 yards. It wasn't so much swinging a golf club. It was more so it was a million degrees. 100%. And there was no shade whatsoever, except for when we were in the golf carts getting it and drinking Dude. Miller Lights. Coors Lights. Sorry. I thought I, um, I saw Miller Lights in the trash. That's right. The uh, We had an instructor, so I think they were having some kind of peewee tournament or something going on. We had an instructor come by, and uh, he was putting out the little, uh, you know, tee off points for them. And he noticed that I had a terrible swing, and he said, "Can I give you a couple pointers?" I said, "Sure." Uh, he realized I was basically swinging at the top of the golf ball. He said, "You need to, you know, kind of hit the ground right, right in front of it, kind of thing, uh, in the best words possible." And uh, it didn't help at all because I don't listen. I'm a stubborn fuck. Um, it was in my head the whole time, but I just didn't do it. And then. Um, he, uh, he said, hey, you guys should definitely come on, like, a hotter day. It'd be funner. Sarcastically, because it was fucking death out, out there. Yeah, yeah. It was it, awful. Yeah, that's that's good. So, uh, are we done? Is that it? We All done right. with this up? Hey, guys. Right, cool. Episode 52. This is going nowhere. Let's fucking Sign go. us out. I had something to talk about. Oh. I can't remember. Um, Uh-oh. How, how did you think your golf went? Uh, I was very good. Just kidding. I didn't play golf in, like, four years. But I used to go to the range every day for like two, uh, two years. Well, five, four to five days a week for two years, a year, something like that. And I hit a couple different courses. Ah, the first like ten holes was like it was a nightmare because we got there 100%. so late. We didn't yeah. have time to warm up at the range or anything. So bad. It was really bad. I didn't. I couldn't remember anything. But then Jake started to say a couple things. My brother. Yeah. That w- was reminding me of like my technique. I was like, oh yeah. So like the last three holes, I finally felt like I was able to get some con- some contact and a little bit of lift. Um, but that's not interesting at all. So I think it is for those of you guys. Uh, uh, listen, uh, we're gonna. I'm probably gonna have some video, some little B-roll video that we'll put up. I'll throw some little music, something like a few minutes long. Nothing, nothing crazy. We didn't take a ton of footage, but. Um, it is something else for us to do. We're going to try to get some footage of it uh, and have some good laughs because it was it was pretty fucking uh, pathetic, to say the least. It was bad. Um, I have a joke for you. All right. It's um, been a good show. If you give me two seconds. <laughs> I'll uh, see you guys later. Um, Let me hit this outro music. Wait. Fuck. Why is a banana the best fruit? It has a peel. Yellow. Yellow. Or green, I think. I can't remember. ASMR version of the backline podcast. I think I just blacked out. Like I didn't even <laughs> I didn't even hear the fucking joke because I was just like, I can't believe he's still doing this bit. We're balls deep. We're still we're still doing that one where it's like let let me get Nico even more sad than he is right now. Jesus Christ. Um, just want to give a quick reminder before we get too further in the show. I got to grab my iPad in a second. Um, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Give us a like. Give us any comments. Episode 50. If you haven't, comment on that. Please let us know the wrap off. I have time stamped it. I'm not sure if I'm like typing that correctly when I, I put it out on the socials. But I did time stamp where the wrap off is. So if you're somebody that goes, hey. I'm so fucking busy, I can't uh, watch this. That's fine. Just go straight to the wrap-off. It starts a little early because it gives you all the rules on how to vote, what what you win, what we win, whatever. And then it gets to the wrap-off. It is a few minutes before. I apologize. If you want, you can kind of scrub right through. Get straight to it. Um, also, we're on TikTok and all socials. You can find us there. It's fun uh, because we make dumb videos. That's what we do. You. I, I make dumb Billy's videos. Billy's at the head. Just to be clear, Billy is at the head of all social media. He deserves all the credit and or blame. Feel free to throw it his way. Dude, I'm kind of fucking stoked. So uh, I've been telling you, we said a couple episodes, like, I, want, I want some shorter shorts, right? First of all, these are getting there. Super white legs. See, see some this? thigh. I like see it. That? Um, <laughs> I, did, I haven't worn them. I got them like a couple weeks ago, and I haven't worn them. 
because they're like swim trunk kind of things. You got to draw a string. Oh, I've yeah, never yeah. worn shorts like that. I'm so used to like putting on shorts, even still putting on a belt, even though my fat ass is barely squeezing in these things. And um, it, it's like liberation, dude. It's so comfortable. No fucking belt. They're, they fit perfectly. They're short. I kind of want them a little shorter because it's fucking hot. But two days ago, I ordered a pair of chubbies, the most expensive shorts in the entire world. Oh, the uh, the jammers. Same thing. Like yeah. Underwear, basically. Yeah. Well, they're um, underwear built into shorts. I don't know if these actually have them, but they have like a, I can't remember which seam line I ordered. They come in like a five, six and a seven. And I can't remember what I ordered. I hope I got five. I mean, they're going to be short, like five inch seam. So like five inches. Oh, that's an option. That's kind of cool. Yeah. On Chubby's site. Uh, they're the everyday wear. So they're going to be like casually like this. I think I even ordered a gray pair. So I'm so fucking excited about those because I want to try them out. And if I like them, then I'm, I'm willing to invest, you know, a few bucks into some good shorts. Have never really owned shorts because I'm so fucking pale that I don't wear shorts. I wear what is up? I was listening to uh, Conan. What's his name? O'Brien. I wasn't trying to be a dick. I forgot his name for half a sec. Yes. Conan O'Brien. Uh-huh. I was listening to his podcast because Bill Burr was on it. It was actually, <clears throat> well, of course it was funny. Those two guys are hilarious, but they both are redheads, fair skin. And they were both saying, or he, Conan was saying that he doesn't wear shorts because I guess he's like six foot six or something that plus his long ass legs that are right. pale are like blinding, I guess. Yeah. Is that why you wouldn't wear them? Yeah. It just looks weird. I remember. So two times it happened. What really set me off. We played, um, rock the ink. If you remember that concert many years ago, and I think this was before I was in Arabella, I was playing with 10 black lines and I wore my typical tan shorts. It was like the one pair that I owned. I was like, it's going to be hot. We're out there just hanging out. I'm wearing shorts. And I looked at the pictures that we got after the fact, and it was horrifying. I looked absolutely awful. I, I look like just straight up, like almost white trashy. And my legs were so fucking wide. I was like, never again. I'm wearing jeans from here on out. Now, I don't remember if it was before or after, but I also played one of my biggest shows, at least stage wise, which was Ram's head and Baltimore with in black lines. And I wore shorts for that show and I've watched the video and it is, I, I'm looking, I'm like, what, what was I thinking? I look absolutely fucking dumb as shit on stage right now. That's so what I, I was vowed, thinking. I was at the show. I was thinking that too. I vowed it. Uh, right. Um, and it's probably why people were like, I think I'm going to go stand on Rich's side instead of Billy's. Uh, wasn't the fact that I was playing so terribly. No, that's why bad, I moved. I definitely moved. But it was the short. Like, oh, so, God. Um, yeah, I vowed after that jeans. And so I, I dabbled into some skinny jeans because, you know, fat boys can wear skinny jeans too. Although I was very skinny back then, uh, relatively at least. Um, I dabbled into some skinny jeans. Not really good because I couldn't really, you know, for what little bit of movement I did on stage, I couldn't move. Um, so I just got, went to normal jeans and I was like, all right, this is good. And then after band days were over, I discovered American Eagle, the greatest thing ever to hit jeans on the planet earth and they stretch. So they would have been perfect for fucking shows. But yeah, I just constantly wear jeans. I get like five pairs every year for Christmas and no shorts. And this year I'm like, I'm not sweating. I'm over it. What's going on? No, no, I was just waiting for the <laughs> Shorts segment to kind of wrap up. I'm just up. like I, I'm team shorts. I right would now, chime baby. in, but I got nothing. Uh, nothing on shorts. Anyways. I'm mad that I can't wear them to work. Well, you work from home Sucks. most days, right? Uh, I still go in two days a week uh, for just the morning, so I have to wear pants into work, and then I come home immediately. Change. What a clothes. hassle! Yeah, it's rough. You it's gotta rough wear pants life. into work two days a week, and you live 15 minutes from where you work. My goodness. Um, my goodness. I feel like I was getting on the something audacity. other than the the shorts, but um. I want to I want to spread some sad news, man. So for real, for real. Oh, good. Okay. Mark Hoppus has cancer. I don't know who that is. Uh, bass player of Blink One Eighty Two. Oh. Um. Well, cancer get, diagnosis it sucks, and I'm scared. Well, you're gonna bum me out. Me, I, I got some better stuff to 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 make it better. Starting off great. Forty nine years old. Um, he's undergoing chemotherapy for three months. I'm trying to figure out what kind of cancer he has. Um. Yeah, like it, it just it's fucking wild. I uh, I hoping for the best. I'm have not. I've never been a Blink One Eighty Two fan. It's just not my style. Um, I appreciate some of the foundation, even though like it, in a metal setting, it does nothing for me. But like 
the pop punk side of things I listened to, obviously, um, Blink-182 was huge in that world. Um, so, like, uh, a day to remember probably can attribute a lot of their, like, style to Blink-182 with a mixture of other things. But, yeah, uh, it fucking sucks. Um, just more things to add on to my existential crisis that I continue to have. That's good that you're kind of weaving that into what's supposed to be an entertaining medium. Just bummer news with no take whatsoever besides it kind of sucks. <laughs> I, I don't I love know how it. to react to those kind of things. You know what I mean? Like I, what I do you have, mean? Because it's terrifying. Yeah. Because I've been terrified oh, you of just, a lot oh of different God. shit. You so just make like, it about you. You're like, oh, my God, another one. The odds are increasing that I might get it. That's what you're thinking. 100%. I mean, I look at it like, all right, let's Jesus. let's be real. Like, Blink-182, these guys are rich as fuck. Even rich people get sick can, and die. can get sick and die, right? Ugh. There's There's no getting out of it. And I've got, I'm very thankful. I've got great health insurance, shit like that. Um, but I can still get sick and die. Like I, I would, th my thoughts was like, all right, become rich. And like, you have enough money to like pay the doctors to be like, all right, so this isn't like real, right? Just get it out of yeah, Steve kind of jobs. Thing. Definitely. Pr oh, wait. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. I forgot about him. Yeah. RIP to a legend. Uh, other sad news. Steve Lukather, who's a guitar player of Toto. Says there will be no new studio albums ever coming from Toto again. That's a relief because I didn't. <laughs> I mean, I hate to be a broken record. Who is that? My initial plan was actually start with that and then lead into real sad news. But like, I got like Wait. the Mark Hoppus stuff on what my brain. What kind of prep are you doing, man? It was bad. As I thought about it, I was like, this is bad. Because like the, the Mark <sighs> Hoppus thing is serious and it really does fucking suck. Um, fuck. Go on. Um. Something else. Uh, hold on. That hold on. You just said the fucking thing. Do you have a thing on it? Do you have any sort of insight on on Toto? A thought or anything besides? I don't give a fuck less about. I've seen. So recent, why are you? <laughs> I've seen recent. <laughs> here's the thing. Here's what's funny. I'm and, gonna start bringing up shit I don't care about, and then just say it, and then be is. like, I'm I'm kind of glad you it. said that because I, I got. did have a thought on it. So I saw something, it, and it's like, it's even become like a TikTok, like a regurgitated TikTok now. There was a a show I think a couple years ago, probably right before COVID. Excuse me, goddamn! White claws give you fucking bleh, claws you know? of law, bitch. Um, Burp. So Toto is playing a show. They're playing their biggest hit, which is. Uh, is it something Africa? Africa. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Um, they're playing Africa, and their their main vocalist is singing. But you can see like their backup vocalist, like he's just tambouring it up, and he's like the the harmony underneath that whole bit, and um, the whole bit. You could see him like. In the back, and he's just like getting the tambourine, and he's like starting to look at his bandmates. Is like, what the fuck are we even doing here? This guy is done. He's done. And then you could see him come over and be like, hey, hey, I got the next one. Don't worry about it. You just step back. Like it was bad. It was uh, the the only other thing that I could compare it to is um, Motley Crue singer. Uh, fuck, what the fuck's his name? Brett Michaels. No. Pretty close though, because he's probably also pretty terrible right now. Lars Ulrich. That's a drummer. You should know that one. Um, um I can only think of Stevie Nicks and Tommy Lee Jones. Mark, who are the Tommy guy Lee that Jones. has cancer? Mark Tommy uh, Lee. Mark Hopoff. No, come on, dude. Uh, you can't talk like him like that. Um, what? Uh, anyways, those of you out there, you'll you'll hopefully put it in the comments because we need fucking comments on our shit. Put in the, the comments. Of, fish tailing. <laughs> Billy's fish tailing. He's out of control. The singer of uh, Motley Crue, uh, really bad, and it was terrible. So I think that's the reason. Like Steve Lukather, like has a very successful line of signature guitars throughout one of the biggest brands out there, Ernie Ball, and uh, they have other good musicians in that band. So to say, like Vince Neil, Toto, Vince Neil, Thank holy God. shit! Right, Look I at you, it. big boy. I pulled it. I, he's you just, didn't even pull out your phone for that, dude. That he's, was stellar. he's just a sad mess, and he's been in the news lately. So I've been just watching his um, giant face. So I, uh, I'm obviously just your standard white boy out there. I absolutely love when Africa comes on. I'll fucking blast it. I love Weezer's cover of it. Not a huge fan of Weezer, but I think Weezer fucking nailed it on the head. Uh, I love that song, but yeah, I'm, I I I couldn't name another song, and I could give a shit less if they come out with another album, especially after seeing some shit like that. There's no amount of studio magic that's going to save that man uh, and put out a good album. So yes, that's my thoughts. Observations, yes, I like it. Um, I just like I like starting off shit like this. Who's my favorite band of all time? 
I don't How know. well do you know me? Come I, on, you man. don't even talk about bands on I this. Do. You don't talk about the same three bands on here. Okay. Who's my I'm favorite? I'm sure anybody can guess this. All time. Do you listen to two episodes? Periphery? Nope. BT Bam? Nope. Alice in Chains? There we go. Okay. Uh, another, I'd say, depends on when you ask me, but definitely top 10, 100% is Stone Temple Pilots. Also a grunge era band. Absolutely love them. Uh, Stone Temple Pilots, Soundgarden. Uh, Pearl Jam is out of the top 10, but they're up there. Um, St- Stone Temple Pilots is one of my favorite. I was very lucky enough to see Scott Weiland before he died uh, do a concert. Uh, went with my dad. It was fucking awesome. Nico's finger. Um, I'm poking, I saw something I'm poking cool. your head right now, bro. They're doing a biopic mm-hmm. movie deal kind of thing on Scott Weiland. So at first I was like, oh, great. Let's uh, go ahead and do another movie about a rock star that overdosed and fucking died. This is sick. I didn't know, and now I want to find it. Scott Weiland wrote a book, and these names for the book are based off of the song names that they had. Uh, Not Dead and Not For Sale, one of my favorite. uh, That's worded after one of my favorite songs of theirs. And uh, he wrote that, and then somebody bought the movie rights, and the person that bought it is a huge, apparently quote-unquote, a huge Stone Temple Pilots fan. So I'm actually really excited about this because outside of Lane Staley, who was the singer of Alice in Chains, he is one of my top favorite vocalists. It's like probably him, Chris Cornell from Soundgarden, and then Scott Weiland. Those are like my top three vocalists of all time. Absolutely love the grunge era. Uh, anybody who says grunge sucks, I could suck my... Yeah, because they're wrong. They don't just have a different. They don't have a different opinion. They're just wrong. They're, it's it's not even an opinion. It's right. a fact. That's right. Like facts. Yeah. Don't care about your feelings. Exactly. Okay. Ben Shapiro. Uh, it's a fact it's good, thing. It's a good person to quote on here. <laughs> and then you write up. Well, actually. Yeah. Uh, actually. and uh, uh, Anyways, uh, I actually like Ben Shapiro. Uh, some things that he says. Some things he said. Uh, I mean, everybody says stupid shit. Uh, it is kind of funny how fast he talks. Anyways, uh, Scott Weiland, one of my top favorite vocalists. I'm actually kind of excited for this. Um, speaking of Allison Chains. I saw this thing. I'm going to link it in the description because it's actually really cool. Um, this old man, I don't even know who this guy is. I don't think he is from anywhere. I didn't really do that much digging into it because mostly it was just like, hey, check out this video. Uh, he covered one of their most popular, like kind of clean, if you will, song. Nope. Oh, it's playing. Uh, one of their clean songs called Nutshell. Uh, it's one of their most covered songs uh, because it's such a beautiful fucking song, in my opinion. Um, and he covered it and I was like, I started listening. I was like, I don't think this is going to be good. I don't know why people are posting this, especially on metal injection. It's not very metal. It's in him and acoustic guitar. But as I listened to it, it feels and sounds like older Johnny cash doing a, an Alice in Chains cover. Um, and I thought it was really fucking cool. Are you chugging the white claw? I was playing a drinking game. <laughs> playing a drinking game. Yeah. When you take a breath, I stop drinking. <laughs> Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't going to end anytime um, soon. Really cool. I'm gonna put the link in the description for that. Uh, I highly recommend checking it out, especially if you're a fan of Johnny Cash and Allison Chains. Kind of cool to see the two together, even though this is not marketed as Johnny Cash doing Allison Chains, because obviously it's not Johnny Cash. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's dead. Um, crazy news. Breaking. Marilyn Manson. We've talked about him a couple times. I'm about to bust. (laughs) That's him all the time because he's Uh, sexually assaulting everybody. He turned himself in. Oh, finally. Justice. Over assault warrant. Yep. He had a warrant out and he decided to go and turn himself in. He reached uh, an agreement. Two counts of simple assault. I don't know what that means. Was the person he assaulted a simpleton? What? You're going to have to, can I get a definition just for the audience? I, I know what it means, but what is it? No, no, no. Go ahead. You'd what? probably explain it better. What? I don't know what it is. Oh, I thought you did. I, don't I know literally just made a means. terrible word association. Joke. <laughs> I was like, was it is simple assault? Was it an assault on a simpleton? I don't know what that means. As in dummy? Simpleton? Um, simpleton? You don't know what simpleton means? No. You've never heard the word simple. That guy's a simpleton. No. Because they were always that talking about like you from like behind your back. They always called you the simpleton, so that's oh. perfect. Excellent. Are you swapping cameras? No, uh, I, I was. Say, yeah, what are you talking about? I want to say real quick, if we don't swap cameras, you get the same view. Just We've been switching. Sorry. I know you are. Uh, I don't feel like reaching right now. Okay. Um, but yeah, something... Uh, um, 
I, I feel like I, I said when we originally talked about this, because we talked about it, I think, on two episodes, because just new information would come out. Um, it's one of those things I was like, you know, for his sake, I hope it's not true, but it sounds like it's fucking true what he's been doing. What has he been doing, Billy? Fill Apparently, us in. simply assaulting. Simply. Simple. Sim- simply. Oh, this is okay. for spitting on a videographer during a concert. Oh, well, that's... This isn't okay. even about the sexual assault. Ah, okay. This but is bullshit. Wasn't that, like, kind of his... Didn't he have people, you can get, you can like, get, understand that that's what he was going to do at a show? So what is simple assault, I wonder? It sounds like spitting on somebody. Well, <laughs> I know, but what does that carry? Is that, like, a felony charge? Maybe. If he turned himself in, I guess. I don't know. I mean, because if that's the case, that fucking long-haired, glasses idiot from Superbad should be in jail right now. Long-haired idiot? Yeah, do you remember the scene? Oh, and the cop hit him in the face with a flashlight? Well, there's that one. That Yeah, that same guy. Yeah, but he yeah. also spit on Seth, who's played by Jonah Hill. Oh, that's right. Yeah. From walking out of the convenience store. Yeah, that's funny. Dude, I had... So we, we've had this little bit going on. Well, I have. Where I'll say, like, this movie quote, and you don't get it. Uh, you got that one pretty good. Um, and I had one that I was going to do, and I forgot it. I, nice. I don't even know why I brought that up. Wow, that was killer. Um, <clears throat> my last thing, so get ready for anything. You have a couple things that we're going to talk about. No, I like this. Um, my last thing that I have, uh, we haven't done a whole lot of music stuff lately, so just chill out. Chill out. My last thing that I have as far as the news, we talked about Limp Biscuit last week. In the fact that they are going to be touring and they're bringing out one of my newly favorite bands, Spirit Box, with them. Turns out that they have about 35 new songs, so they're going to be dwindling that down to an album size and releasing a brand new album soon. Thoughts? Who's this band? Limp Biscuit. Oh, no thoughts whatsoever. Da, 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 I don't, da, I don't. Throw your hands up. I know like two songs, I think. By There's Limp no way, dude. Can you hum some? I, I can't. Um, well, did they do roll? Did one. they do rolling? They did rolling. Rolling, roll. Yeah, I know that one. Okay, that's one. That was the song I was just humming. Oh, okay, my breathe bad. Breathe in, breathe out. Hands up, and hands uh, out. They got that. I did it all for the nookie. Come on. That was nookie. a so- that Come was on. a Limp Biscuit song. And I am having a hard time, but to be fair, I owned almost every album that they put out. You know, they went through a research. They had they had phases. Like they got giant when they came out, and then it got hack and played out really fast. And now it's just coming right back around because people that used to listen to them are a little older and they're ready for that. Just, you know, everything's cyclical and fucking lame as shit. So well, I don't know if it made it into the episode, but I know we had a little piece on new metal. I think it was part of the stuff and I did not add it in. I listened to the camera audio. It was trash. If you really want it, uh, I got a text from my buddy about the beer. He's like, oh, I was like, oh yeah, we actually did talk about you, but uh, it was fucked. Right. Um, but um. We talked a little bit about new metal, and I think new metal is trying to make a comeback. I think it has for like the last year. I don't want it to. I'm just going to be frank. It was, uh, I went from grunge to new metal. So it was a huge like part of my life growing up. Um, but I didn't hold on to it like grunge. I, I, I quickly, like, other than like Linkin Park, like I can hear a Linkin Park song, and maybe it's because Chester died or whatever, and I have some like conspiracies surrounding that. Um, but, like, if I hear, like, a good, like, solid, one of their big hit Linkin Park songs, I'm just, like, I'm chilled. I want to listen to it, and I almost want to cry. Um, it, it's just something about their music, man. It just, like, uh, of course, anytime I hear one of them, I just picture, like, Optimus Prime, like, running in the background, <laughs> which is weird. Why? Uh, because they were, like, the biggest, like, um, I forget which, uh, Dark Side of the Moon. They were the, like, theme song. for. Oh, were movie. they? Yeah. Oh. I guess you didn't know that. I saw the first I, uh, one real quick. Unpopular I saw, opinion. I, I love okay. Transformers. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, let's go ahead. I love Transformers. No, go ahead. Finish. That was it. That was it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Glad you got that out. I'm waiting for you to fucking just relax for a minute and burn out on whatever you're talking about. <laughs> Man, you had a lot of hot takes there in a, in a very short amount of time. Well, sort of 20 something minutes. God. And there was well, we talked about golf a little there bit. Were like, it was probably like twenty minutes. There were no opinions whatsoever dropped at all. I gave all my opinions. You dude. read a bunch of stuff. I can't wait for you to read. And this it was stuff. obvious. And you it was know. obvious. No, no, no. I listened to that garbage for twenty fucking no, minutes. Real quick. I listened to this for twenty this minutes. Is... Can I talk now? Am I allowed to talk now? You can rebut. I was listening to you for a while, buddy. Take it easy. Go ahead. This is a show. We're just hanging out, bud. You read a bunch of articles, and then you made the first observation about it. 
That was obvious. So and so got cancer. How do you feel about that? <laughs> that oh, it's sad. <laughs> yes, yes, it is sad. Oh, so and so, they're not doing music anymore. What do you think about that? What do you think? What do you think about that? Toto not doing music or whatever. Are you asking me right yeah, now? Yeah, what did you think about that? I said that's a good thing, and I explained why. Okay, perfect. That is a take. I like that. Thank you. Obvious take. Uh, what I else? I explained why Mark Hop is getting cancer sucks. Right, because it's cancer, and it's Mark from Blink-182. Marilyn it Manson sucks, man. is a... Uh, right, okay. ...is a follow-up. Yes. So there's not much to take on there, and then I read a little more, and I was like, this is dumb, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, Limp Bizkit putting out a new album. And you like it. No, you hate it because you don't like new metal. Yeah, I don't want new metal to come back. Fair enough. Uh, but I'm interested to see that. I am. I, I'd be interested to see what these old fucks come up with. Wes Borland. <clears throat> you're asking me questions. we got to put it back. No, you're just going to keep Wes going. Borland I asked you one question, and then a, you just uh, took it into another direction. But go ahead. Switch to you. Has been like heralded as like a, a pretty good guitar player, I think, in the past. I don't know what people think of him now. But I think, I mean, he was a huge part of their success outside of Fred Durst, I think. Um, so it'd be interested to see, like, there's, there's this weird wave of shit happening. Like West Borland and them are doing things again. Uh, John Frusciante has rejoined Red Hot Chili Peppers. So, uh, when I announced BT Bam, I have not announced this, have I? Or did I? Last week? I don't keep up with your quote unquote announcements. They're coming out with Colors 2. Did I talk about that? I don't know. Why would I know that? Because maybe I talked... If I didn't say it, I'm fucking excited as shit. Oh, God. <clears throat> BT Bam has come out with Colors 2. Colors is their best album of all time. And uh, I've heard a song from it so far. Absolutely fucking love it. It's sick. Uh, if you haven't, go pre-order it now. Um, so they're doing that. So uh, our, our buddy Pat actually made a joke and said, well, you think Red Hot Chili Peppers will come out with a Californication too?" now that John Frusciante is back in the band and shit like that. But uh, anyways, West Portland thing. There was one more thing I talked about. What was it? I can pull it up if I have to. I mean, obviously, I talked for 30 minutes. I read headlines. So yeah. chill out of this. You just read articles. I don't. I didn't. Okay. I had 20 minutes of opinions and takes on it. Mostly uh, reading. But yeah, that's great. Uh, and the Scott Weiland biopic. Ah. Which I'm fucking super stoked about. Very good opinions after on after very, shit very, into. very cool, Anyways, original. Go ahead. You've got some stuff to talk about. takes that really just. Just float to your to your Ray mind Diana, immediately as soon as you read it. Hands down. Sorry. Back up. Back up. Tell me what you're gonna do now. I don't know what you. What is that? That's a uh, keep rolling, rolling, rolling. It's oh. a Limp Biscuit song. Oh, okay, cool. Clause of law. What you got? So I'm gonna redirect my frustration with your okay. lack of effort and put it towards somebody or something with a. I think we'll be on the same page with this. I really think we will. Something else that has a huge lack of effort. In this specific area of Maryland, especially Southern Maryland, you have a lot of, you know, you got a lot of, you could call it old money, I guess, walking around here. Yeah. And you get a lot of, what do you say, I call it complacency with a lot of those certain businesses, certain businesses, mostly in customer service, right? For example, restaurants that are around and have been around for like, I don't know, two, three generations, something like that, maybe more. God forbid it's more because... Someone's rolling in the grave right now. We went to a crab house that is notoriously old and has been around forever. So all the locals go there. Their parents have gone there. Their parents' parents have gone there because they got fucking snow crab legs for $36 or something, right? We walk in, and it's it's almost like we go there for Father's Day, basically. So we were going there with Allison's dad because that's where he wants to go get some crab legs, which is understandable. It's good food. Right. I don't hate seafood. I don't love it. <clears throat> Anyways. So we walk in, it's almost like, it's almost like they don't want you there. Every time you go into one of these old establishments and it kind of looks kind of shitty, it's old. They haven't changed the decor in 20 years because they don't need to because their fan base, they all live within 10 miles right. and they'll all go to that restaurant once, twice a week. And that's, that's the farthest they'll go. Do you know what I mean? It's. Sorry. Can I make a point real quick? Sure. It's definitely, uh, we had a hot take last week. It's actually our TikTok uh, for this week um, on Maryland and just how Marylanders are, you know, the whole flag thing. Southern Maryland is definitely like a pick a restaurant. Doesn't matter if it sucks or not. And this is our establishment. Right. We have to meet up here. Like Red Oak or whatever the hell that place was closes down. People lose their fucking minds. Uh, any of these other places like Tiki closed down and people are like, what the fuck are we going to do then? Right. As if there's not a hundreds of other, you know, fucking water bars. I found another one the other day. I'd never heard of. It was great. 
water bars or watering holes? Water bars, like uh, a bar that's on the water, so to speak. Oh, okay. I, I don't know if that's an actual term. But nope. Yeah, they they it's it's a cult. Southern Marylandism is a cult. Right. We have to go here. Like, uh, if you don't go to Gilligan's this weekend, you're a fucking pleb, right? Right. You're fucking dumb. But anyways, uh, it, it's definitely a cult. My apologies for cutting in there. But yes, it, it's bad. And that's why they don't change up the shit. Because- no, I'm glad you summarized it. But um, yes, they, okay. So, and the decor is whatever. The people are whatever. It's fine. And no host whatsoever. Uh, a Never. Server caught. Uh, we caught her attention because we're trying to eat at their restaurant. Right. And she's promptly at the bar talking shit with, you know, the bartender, whatever. She comes. She's approximately, I don't know, 65 years old or so. <laughs> uh, with, hey, I, I mean, I have scratcher tattoos. I don't mind. Those are, those looked, and she's just loud and proud about it. Right. How many? She walks up to us. How many? Mm. I'm excited. How? There's three of us here. Three, please? All right, follow me. Just reluctantly... No smile. What are we at Denny's? No welcoming shit. Like I, people at Denny's are better than this yeah. for sure because yeah. they have something to lose, right? I have a point to this. And then she, you know, sits us down, throws us our menus, you know, throws down some silverware wrapped up in construction paper, or whatever the fuck they have at these fucking crab houses, fucking shitholes. <laughs> I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. Um, I like the food, so it's fine. Oh, hush puppies. Like that's the end of the. I hate it. I, anyways, hate them. And uh, so yeah, we sit down. We get our we get our drinks. Thank you. She's prompt with everything. I will say that okay. the service is okay, but it's just they don't. There's no zero customer service. Zero care for are you enjoying this? Is everything okay? You know how you doing? Like a smile, a peppy attitude, bubbliness, something that I would expect from a fucking server who's obviously been doing it forever uh, for approximately forever i guess and it's just that's the whole that's the whole experience there and what my point fuck every single server was like that every single server was between the ages of 40 and 60 looking uninterested in anything no like severity like let's go 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 to anything and it's like that at every single fucking old shit restaurant every shit grocery store that's been passed down from their parents and it's like they just have their shit family work there because cousin fucking ray ray can't get a job anywhere else well can you can you have him work at the fucking restaurant please fucking why ray ray for real dude he needs he's on probation what do you want him to do right now yeah just put him in there he doesn't have to do anything he doesn't have you don't care people are going to keep coming no matter what shit service we give them they love us they love this restaurant they love the name they love the familiarity they don't go outside every 20 mile radius for their basically their whole life and if right. they do it's they're going to want it to be terrible because their whole little circle that's they all are like oh this is our home we love being here no you're anxious about going and trying anything new i know for a fucking fact you are and so you just make every excuse to make your bubble smaller and smaller because you're just shit and you don't know how to get outside that bubble because you've just been inside it for so long. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's why I try to go out and do something that maybe I'm not even like a year, a year and a half ago or so. I went out, uh, Greg wanted me to go bird hunting. I don't hunt at all, but I was like, where, what are we doing? Uh, it's a, it's a place, uh, in, it's like five hours away. We'd stay there for like three nights in a cabin or something I'm like in my head, I, I was looking for the excuses not to go, but then I recognized that. I was like, what is that? Oh, you haven't done something outside of your comfort zone in like four months. Right. And I told me, I was like, yes, let's go right now. Like for sure. I'll go. It was in a couple of weeks. Went, had massive anxiety. As soon as I got there, everything was great. We had fun, killed some fucking birds, got some quail and some pheasant. And we just hung out with this, at this old family farm. They, they have people hunt their birds there. It's a, it was a good time, but I got out of my comfort zone, got out of the anxiety. You know, some, sometimes you ask people to do something and they look for excuses to get the fuck out of it. You know, recently having put on a wedding, I ran into a, I ran into a lot of that, but then I had superstars go above and beyond looking for reasons to actually follow through with their commitments. Yeah. And I remember who those people are. And those people all are basically the same kinds of people when they're looking for excuses for whether it be family commitments, friend commitments, uh, work related, or just to, just anything to stay inside their comfort zone. I don't want to leave my house. I want to go to this grocery store pretty much every time I need to go to a grocery store. We go to these four restaurants and that's basically my life until I'm in the ground. Right. And that's my whole issue with these complacent old timey, just not giving a fuck about service because they have that we got family wealth, I guess, or whatever it is, or they, you know, are on their 
No, they have. There's no effort whatsoever. I have a, <clears throat> I have a feeling a lot of those people that are there, though, they're just like they've been working there. So like, there's a restaurant that is similar in that fashion, but the service is completely different. And that's Nicoletti's. It's a very small place. Um, yes, Nicoletti's. Yes, I've had Nicoletti's, and they are fucking impressive. Wait, which one is Nicoletti's? The one that's right next to ABC okay, Liquor. Not that, but they're good. Okay, uh, I'm thinking of the place in Waldorf. No, no, Napoli's. Napoli's. <laughs> Napoli's is a family-owned operation, but even the owner is in there working. And she, the moment you walk in, she's the first one to greet you there. Hey, how are you doing? Give us one moment. We'll be right with you. This and that. That's great. No, there. The Love servers. It. There's some that you could tell have been there a while. There's some that have rotated in and out. You could tell that, and they're there to take care of you. They're dying for their fucking cigarette break. Yeah, well, but they still want to help you out. And they're constantly coming around. They're asking those questions. Um, I now, on the other hand, I've been to a place called Ray's. Great food on the water. Beautiful spot. It's in uh, Calvert County, and uh, it's the same thing. You're walking up to the bartender who probably owns the place. Who's been there 120 years, and you're going, "Hey, can we grab a couple menus? We're about to spend hundreds of dollars at your establishment. And we've got 12 people here, and they're just like, "What the fuck are we supposed to do now? Like, what do we do? And it's like." Are you kidding me right now? It, it's a mess, but I, I've seen places like that. Um, it's definitely a Southern Maryland thing, and I'm half and half now because I've fallen in that zone. I don't like. I, I'm like I'm a county man. I ain't fucking leaving this county unless I have to. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is, but I have fallen into. I don't want to leave St. Mary's County unless I have to. Like the birth of my child. You don't know what it is it's because you have a family here and you work fifteen but I have minutes away. All my family's in Charles County. Okay. I don't want to leave St. Mary's. Like I don't want to say your over. your immediate family. Right, right. Um, we have a long term listener who won't go five miles past his house. So, and we make fun of him, but I'm I'm falling slowly into like his ways of like I don't want to leave. Yeah, my it house becomes either. it can it has the potential. I mean, that's not not funny. It, it has the potential to become agoraphobia. You know, your circle will get smaller and smaller, sure. and the next thing you know, you're freaked out about. I have some family members; their circle has gotten smaller and smaller. Some people quicker than others, and they they literally will not leave their house. That's why I got stoked for with any my, reason. Two of my like very good friends moved down here. I'm like, fuck yes, I don't have to fucking leave the county. Right, I mean, it's We're con- here. if it's just for convenience sake, great. But if like you don't, if you are looking for reasons to not like, you go up to Annapolis every now and then. We go for Liam's haircut, and I do enjoy it because we try to find something. Yeah, I didn't know why you went there. You go there for a haircut. Lauren searched forever. Okay. Uh, uh, again, like last episode that I don't think she's listened to yet. I love you, honey. Um, Lauren searched forever, and she found this place that like specializes in kids. And then she's like, all right, I found a place. I was like, all right, cool, where are we going? She's like, Annapolis. I'm like, we're fucking what? For a haircut. And they're not cheap. We're talking like there's kids like fucking a fire truck, a police car, and a, and a and an airplane or something. There's three seats. And they're like fucking $35 haircuts. And then on top of that, they're smart asses, and they put fucking toys right in front of the register. So I walk by, Liam goes, I want this, this, and this. Okay, great. Those are $15, $15, and $15 a piece. Ridiculous. We spend like 50 bucks. Then we go eat at a restaurant and we're obviously not going to fucking Chipotle in Annapolis. We're going to find a good spot that we don't get to go to and do it. But um, we go places like your wedding. Best excuse to get out of this fucking area. And it was a beautiful place too. felt like home. I want to move there. All right. Are you still on the haircut? I'm just going to move. I got to move. I got to move on. I got to move past that. I can't say uh, though. I saw, I saw a pretty funny meme the other day and it was like, I don't know who they associate it with, if there was a certain kind of person or just anybody, I think, in general. And it's like anybody that goes out of town and goes to, like, another town and has, like, two beers, and they're just looking around after the second beer and just like, I'll fucking move it here. And it was me the entire weekend. We were there for your wedding. Yeah. I, I literally took a sip of a beer at that little bar that we were at almost every night, and I was like, dude, I'm fucking moving here. This place is sick. Yeah, you brought it up quite a bit. And yeah, I was like, I there's literally just mountains here and probably people that don't want you to move here. But there was a little town. Which is what I like about where I'm at now. We've got this little town. It's a little crowded here. But it's still like smaller than Waldorf, right? And it, it's this little town. I've got everything I need. But yet still like less people than Waldorf. I, I don't know. Uh, I like it a lot. Go buy 100 acres, man. Um, dude. That's what you need. I want to so bad. But at the same time, I'm like, got to have my internet. I want a game. Do this shit. Um, 
if I could find a spot like that, I want to be able to probably work from home because I can't afford to do not work, you know. Uh, anyways. Um, do you know what silence is? A silence? Is or that, like, terrifying for you to, like, have a beat and there just be, like, a silence, like a silent moment? I'm curious. So I put up. Because um, you do this thing. You do this thing. You you run out. I see you run out of steam. Right. And then and then you go, all right, uh, anyways. And then I, that's when you're jogging to the next topic <clears throat> instead of maybe sitting in the silence. Maybe I'll have something I can organically say. But instead, you just keep talking. There, I think there is a, a slight fear of it. And... <laughs> I find myself umming a lot. I've been doing this stuff for a little over a year now, a year and a half now that we've been doing this. Mm-hmm. And I've even made the gear review videos. And my first one, there was so many cuts in it from um, 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 um. It's me trying to gather my thoughts. I have an issue with my thoughts. I'm a fast talker and then I'll mumble and then I realize I mumble and try to bring it back try to enunciate and then I lose my fucking mind. And it, it's this really weird cycle that I have. And I noticed even the other day after doing this for over a year, I recorded this video for this reaction thing and I cut out so many fucking ums. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I, I should be past this at this point should flow right out of me. But should you, <clears throat> I don't know. A year and a half is still short lived on YouTube. Right. Very short life. And we've got, about a hundred videos at this point total between the gear views and the podcast. Mm-hmm. But, um, um, I don't know. I'll let you go. Just sit I in also it. also don't like just, editing. Dude, just sit in it. We were about to sit in it for one second I don't like and it's editing, totally fine. And I'm always afraid like, Oh, here's the part where they just got silent. I'm gonna turn it off. I don't know. Maybe it's just no, in my silence head. is powerful. Just use it. Relax. Um, Dead air is different from just like a little bit of yeah. a little beat. You know, let the beat drop just a hair. You know, let it build up. Jesus Christ. I gotta watch more podcasts. I've been saying that for fucking months. It's insane that you do this and you don't <laughs> watch podcasts. It's just, it's nuts. And I sent you links to like to seven some or eight. To really good shit. Some of them seem really interesting and I don't. You didn't. I have not. You sit here all day. What the fuck do you do when you're not working? <clears throat> you don't have work orders coming in out of the I ass. Watch Twitch. Oh, God, it's so pointless. You're not even getting anything out of it. All right, fine. I'm getting pumped for video games. God, that's whatever. It's your time. You do whatever you want to do with your time. I'm going to fucking play Destiny 2 and fucking scream at teenagers. I'll do that. 12 things science has learned about metalheads through music studies. Is Loudwire, this is a Loudwire article. Is it, like, specifically for, like, uh, quote-unquote heavy, like, music? As far as I remember, they're, they're definitely huge. I think they used to be a magazine. I could be wrong, but they're one of the bigger like outlets for a genre, so to speak. But I think they center around like metal mostly, and then but they still dive into like rock and stuff like that. I think. Yeah, this it's article. It's been a while since I've let read any live wires. I've read this article. I was like, oh, this is. I'm sort of interested in this, and now after my partial work week I've had, I am like more more annoyed than anything that this is actually an article what conclusions blah 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 microscope blah 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 fans mental health benefits from li- fans mental health benefits from listening to metal okay so listen <clears throat> and how is that did not increase their anger but increase their positive emotions suggesting that listening to extreme music represents a healthy and functional way of processing anger but increased positive emotions suggesting that listening to extreme music. So increased positive emotions. Does that equate to mental health benefits? I would think so. You think so? Yeah. I guess. Cause if you're seeing something that's annoying you like this is annoying me. It might not be good for my mental health. Okay, so I should probably be, just be listening to music. Uh, when our listeners could have lower blood pressure, that's crock shit. My blood pressure is pretty fucking high. Mental fan, met metal fans are more likely to have sexual encounter in a car. That was a weird one. When you sent that to me, that was a weird one to me. Have you ever had sex in a car? I don't think I've had full on sex. I think there's so been it's half on sex. Oral. <laughs> I've got a blowjob in a car. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that counts. No, it's a sexual encounter. No, it's a sexual encounter, so that definitely counts. True, for true. sure. Yeah, that counts. While listening to metal, actually. 
Well, it was that's probably, a, that's so off. It was probably putting. like a that's, day to remember, so it was like half metal. That's right? so off putting, dude. I can't. It listen. was all a day to remember, at least. I can't listen to shit when I'm fucking. There's no way. I think it was just like. It better be like a Netflix in the background, like show <clears throat> or Gordon Ramsay so, screaming. Um, uh-huh. it's Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Fuck! That's all. That's all I watch is Kitchen Nightmares on fucking repeat. I know every single episode. Anytime it's happened to me, it was either a driving thing or like sitting in front of my parents' house. So it just you need to feel like we're just like chilling in the car and not like try to fuck. Yeah, my mom never came in my room. Uh, cars was definitely a thing. My like, door lock was we broken on my room. I've walked in oh, my God. brother ah, banging his now wife oh, in a no. twin bed. Oh, so there's no room to like hide. Oh, right? no. I just like walk. I didn't know she was there. This is a funny Were story. Were they making zero noise? They're like, we got to be quiet. I don't know. I think so. I, I didn't live there anymore. And I, I came by the house and I think it was like to hang out with him or something. I don't know what the fuck I was doing. He there. invited you over. He's like, let's but get I it just, in real quick. <laughs> real quick. I just like, he moved to my old room because my room was much bigger. And I remember walking in and just like, where the fuck is he? And then I see a door shut. I was like, oh, I don't know. And I don't think, I must have not seen her car there or thought like, oh, the door is always shut. And I just walk in. <laughs> They're fucking getting it. And I'm like, oh, shit, my bad. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, dude, put a sock on the door or something. Like, what the fuck are you doing, man? No, that's just This made- is my old room. Get the fuck out. That like- just made you closer. You were like, can I join? Oh, that's weird. Let my me bad. help my guide bad. your cock. My bad. Ew. Let me guide your Ew. cock. Ew. Super bad, man. That's, oh. We shouldn't be cock blocking you. We should be guiding, guiding your, your cock. cock. That's right. Damn Come it, on. dude. Oh, All right. Guide my brother's cock. Come on. That's weird. Well, you said it. <laughs> A 2021 study of musical preference. I can't wait till he listens to drives this. a list. I was going to say it's probably a good idea to talk about that when he's not here to defend himself. Drives a listener's cognitive styles. Propose that someone's favorite type of music relates to whether they're more empathetic or logical in everyday life, lending credence to the idea that one could accurately judge another by their music taste. The results determine that adherents of mellow music were not more outwardly compassionate. Loud music lovers were labeled more systemizing. What the fuck am I reading right now? I don't know. All in all, <clears throat> this is basically stupid. Basically, this whole article says that you are a smarter, better person. Yeah, we're so much and better. Yeah, 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 you're right. When you right. listen to metal. Yeah, now, yeah. to be fair, thank you, Loudwire. Waste of time. Harvard did studies on this. I'm pretty sure, like years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, it does talk about death metal. Now, you brought up the. Uh, sorry, I'm just kind of summing up what I, I heard you say here. Summing it up. <clears throat> uh, I heard you bring up the blood pressure part of things. Um, that runs. In your family, though, right? Yeah, it's yeah. so genetic. Even though you're, but it should. And my thoughts, metal kind of calms me. But as I get older, it's not that it doesn't calm me anymore. There's just other things like you know, old yacht rock or something. I get nostalgic, and I want to bring back some old stuff, uh, like Toto's Africa. And uh, I just want to chill out and vibe to it. It also kind of brings me back to like my honeymoon in Aruba. I've been thinking about that a lot. God damn, a lot lately, uh, because my sister in law went to. Kirks and Taco, Turks and Keiko, however you say it. Flirks and Blaco. Recently, we talked about it on the live episode. Um, and so now I just really want to go back to Ruben. Like, I'm ready to take all friends, family, whoever wants to fucking go, save up the money, let's fucking go. It's going to be sick. Where are you going for yours, by the way? Uh, we don't have a fucking clue. Okay, cool. Uh, I recommend Aruba. Best place, and I can literally tell you everything to do, and you will spend a, a little bit to get there and stay. But then you won't spend as much there, but you'll have the time of your fucking life. I promise you. But anybody can go anywhere. Obviously, my sister-in-law didn't listen, and she decided to go somewhere else. But anyways, I took a breath. Um, it's all good. Metal it's- is fucking great. Oh, okay. um, it's good for the health. Um, and there's been studies on that for a long time because obviously metalheads, you know, it's the same as like the, the, the rap scene has gotten like, oh, it just induces crime. And then metal is like, oh, it's the devil and murder, right? Like rap has been associated with like drugs and, you know, we, we had, you know, Tupac with thug life, you know, so we associate thugism. That's not a word with rap, even though most rap is about uh, lately, it's been about fucking for some reason. I don't get it. Um, and then it's metal always, has been all always about been in rap devil worship and shit like that. But that's not the case. Like even cannibal courts, don't they write about like weird shit? They write about whatever they want. Like ponies and shit. They, everything to them is just an over the top kind of joke. Yeah. The, the whole band's a joke and like the fans get that, that it's just hyperbole, but yeah, 
people from the outside are like, oh, that's ridiculous. Oh and Cannibal Corpse is literally like, yeah, yeah it is ridiculous, yeah, isn't it? Fucking like, tree you're taking us seriously. Every shirt they don't shit. care. They're just. It, it's, I think it all probably started as a joke, and then they got really fucking big, and they're like, oh, "It's shit, still we a joke. Keep going it's with this. still a joke." But like, people from the outside don't get it at all. I did see uh, when I was looking through for some some materials. Uh, there was an interview on like CNN or Fox, one of the major news networks, uh, with like a war member that was all dressed up, like doing a full on interview. Yes, it's kind of fucking funny. I didn't know about that. You do about what? About that interview? No. Oh, you're just like yes, like that's funny. Yeah, because it's war. It. Okay, yeah, yeah. What a joke of a band. That's um, also the point. <laughs> something cool happened recently. How cool was it? It was very cool. Um, I bought Black Ops finally on PC. Oh, so we're playing. We can. All right, cool. I started last night, so I realized I want to level up certain weapons in, for Warzone. And they're Black Ops weapons. So the only way to level them up is go play Warzone enough and literally get my fucking loadout and then die. So I can't level it up there. And I uh, realized the best way to do it is go play some hardcore mode so I can get my headshots and shit like that. And Black Ops. Um, it's fucking wild on PC. I see why people bitched. For some reason, it might have been just my Xbox One. X. Not the newest one, not an S, not the original. Just my Xbox One X played that game just fine. Now I'm seeing why people bitch about this game. It was fucking wild. Uh, but I am a little used to it. I know the maps well enough that I can play it, especially hardcore mode. I'm interested to dive with other people in different modes because I've never played like S&D and shit like that. Um, I carried about a 1.25 KD for most of the night. I had one game that was really bad. It was like a 0.45. Um there's definitely cheating still in that game. It's fucking sick. It's probably and and the wild thing to me is I'm on PC. Every fucking game, including Modern Warfare, every game I get in, because it's crossplay enabled, because I play Warzone, I don't turn it off. All controller system players. Hmm. All play a lot of PlayStation. And I'm gonna say right now, I fucking hate PlayStation players. And I'll tell you why. I've got some TikToks and some videos on my YouTube uh, coming out. My personal one, not this one. Um, I don't know what it is about PlayStation players, but I find that for some reason... Do you remember the old Kinect days for Xbox? Yeah, the motion sensor crap. And it also had like a mic on it so you can like communicate with family. It never fucking played out. Microsoft has tried for so long. Facebook is trying it now with their Portal app. They, It's like PlayStation players somehow have a Kinect for PlayStation... And that's their mic. You hear every fan going on in the background. They're playing some shitty music on a CD player from the 90s in three rooms over that's just cutting into your mic, and then they constantly just talk to other people, not the team. And I don't get it. I have to mute them all. It's fucking annoying. And it's only PlayStation players. Why? You're a PlayStation player now. Tell me why. Do you uh, have any I'm, idea? I'm just a fucking gamer. Like, the, the PlayStation headset, like PlayStation branded, this is what you get with the four. I don't or the use five. a PlayStation headset. I know you don't, but listen, just that, it's a hundred bucks. Why aren't people, they're using like the first iPhone. Because headset. they're, they're probably, a lot of them probably kids and they have a PS4. These guys are straight up adults. I can hear their balls drop okay, 20 years ago. They're fucking, they're fucking losers that are at home and don't have like top notch gear, but they can bitch on their PS4 with their shitty little iPod earbuds. So yes. I made, I made it's a easier. point, I made a point of that as I was playing, uh, to, to nobody. I was talking to myself because I was the only viewer of my Twitch. I made a point that I'll probably put in a video like, I get it. Not everybody's going to have what I have or other people have. Your big top dick streamers. I mean, Nick Merckx is one of the top streamers in the fucking world, and he's got a headset mic. It sounds fine. That's fine. Not everybody has this. Not everybody has a Go XLR. Not everybody has the Rode or a fucking beautiful interface. Not everybody has that, but a normal fucking headset will do the fucking job. Nobody uses them. They're using fucking Skull Candy earbuds. That were thirty bucks a target because they don't. They're not a gear enthusiast like you. They're actually a pure gamer. But you're gamer. pissing people off. That's not a pure gamer. Pure gamers. You're I'm just, watching no, them every fucking no. day, you're and they're just, not using you're that just, shit. You're just you. You're just a viewer. You're an audience member. You're just. Yeah, honey, it's out in the car. 
us gamers, we're not concerned about what other people really think about the, our setup because guess what? That's not true. Guess what? Our setup. That's not true. Our setup puts you us. You bought a headset for me because you wanted setup, to upgrade. Our setup puts you us. You bought a mic from me because you wanted to upgrade. All right. Did you not? Yeah, Just you're real right. Quick, as you go, I'll let you finish. No, you're you right. Bought that shit because you wanted to upgrade and sound better. No, you're right. You're right. You're 100 percent right. Anything else? I love you. Um, Great. No, do you want to get into the other story that we had, or you want to do some more? Nope. <laughs> Are you mad at me? Mm-mm. Okay. I just don't want to do this. I can't. I can't hear you. I just don't want to do this. I can say it into the mic. Just would not like to do this right now. Okay. Um, that's probably going to be it for us, then, folks.